Laird. I am the executive chef and owner of Rose's Classic Americana in Boulder, Colorado. And today in quarantine cooking, I don't know about you guys, but me and my family, while we've been stuck at home, have been doing a lot of baking. Uh, we've been doing a lot of sourdoughs and working on our starters. So I have all these delicious fun breads laying around and we were wondering what to do with them. So today I'm going to show you what we're gonna do with our sourdough and we're gonna make just the top of the French onion soup. So first thing to do is I've got two onions, um, a red and a sweet yellow or a white or a yellow, whatever you want, whatever you have. The whole point of this cook today is that we didn't have to go to the store for any of this. What I want is for you to take from this video and say, you know, I might not have that ingredient, but I have this, and that's gonna work. Because we shouldn't be going to the store. We should be cooking with the things that we have on hand, and that's what's most important. Get my pan heated up. I'm gonna go high to medium high in that pan because of what I have is avocado oil. I'm gonna add a nice two tablespoons of that and let that get hot until it's rippling hot. So to slice onions like I like for this recipe, I usually don't take the butt off, but for these I'm going to. And just like my guy David Kinch said, can you ever slice an onion thin enough? Like, no, you can't, it's a thing. So root end off, and then we're just gonna slice nice and thin. Use your knife skills, get a sharp knife. Maybe that's something fun you could do during quarantine is learn how to sharpen your own knives. So I'm gonna cut my onions julienne thin. I took the top off and the root bottom off, and then I'm just gonna cut them nice and thin as I can. Now that my onions are cut, I'm gonna go into a nice medium hot pan, and I'm gonna let these guys saute. Toss them in my pan too. Get all that fat incorporated and move around. Now that the onions are in the pan, they're gonna stay there. I'm gonna stir often, but for 20 to 30 minutes. I'm not crying, you're crying. Next, we're gonna put some sliced garlic in our caramelized onions. Garlic, also like onions, should always be sliced nice and thin. Chefs will argue that there's only one way to cut a clove of garlic. I believe that garlic gets cut from, well, I guess this would be the bottom, bottom to top. Some chefs cut this way, but they're wrong and I'm right. So it's this way, top to bottom, as thin as you can. So I'm gonna put four cloves of garlic in our caramelized onions. And just like the onions, I'm gonna cut them as thin as I can. And then once those garlic is cut nice and thin, we're gonna go into our saute pan. You can hear the onions as well away, doesn't it sound good? Give that a nice stir. And then let onions will caramelize on their own. So all you have to do is sit back, stir them every so often, Enjoy a glass of wine and let it do its thing. Next step is to glaze your onions with uh, some wine. Uh, if you don't have just regular table wine, I'm going to use white wine. Red wine is just as good, or if you have, say, like a masala or a port, anything like that will work. Shoot, water will even work. Um, do you have chicken stock? Do you have some consomme? Anything you have in your pantry, you just want to put something flavorful, a flavorful liquid in your pan to the glaze. So listen. You hear that? Get that going. I'm gonna, my, I use white wine, so I'm going to stir that in, and then I'm going to let that reduce offset, or what that means is till it's dry. So reduce the wine or your flavorful liquid until it's offset. That's the next step. Another fun thing I found in my pantry is this can of condensed um, bouillon. It is a good substitute for chicken stock or beef stock or vegetable stock, but if you don't have those and you have some bouillon cubes, totally acceptable. Just read the label on the back. This is like one tablespoon per cup. I'm just gonna eyeball it, looks pretty good. And then dissolve it in a cup of warm water. Um, I'm gonna put this in our caramelized onions because the more flavor you can put in there, you're just developing layers of flavor. My wine's gonna reduce OSEC. I'm gonna put some chicken stock in, reduce that OSEC, and it's just gonna be a really, a really deep, a really flavorful, well-rounded caramelized onion. Next, I'm gonna to toast my sourdough. I like butter, so I'm gonna give a nice big tablespoon to a medium-high skillet. Uh, foamy and wonderful butter. In the meantime, with sourdough, we're gonna cut it thick. 
thick sourdough is where it's at. So I'm going to cut my loaf one inch thick. It's, a, it's important to me that we have a nice thick cut because one, I've got so much bread, two, such great texture in thick cut bread. And as soon as you get your butter nice, hot, and foamy like this one is, put your bread in, flip it over once, and then leave it alone. Leave it alone until it's really caramelized and golden brown. Next, I'm going to clean some thyme for our caramelized onions. Thyme is really great. If you can find fresh thyme, that's awesome. But if what you have in your pantry is dried thyme, that's okay too. And it doesn't even have to be thyme. Do you have oregano? Do you have rosemary? Do you have something called pizza seasoning? Like, kind of use this recipe as an experiment to clean out some of those things that are sitting there that you don't necessarily need or know what to do with. I have a thyme plant, so what I'm doing is just cleaning fresh thyme off of the stem. I'm gonna rough chop it and then add it to my onions. So my sourdough is nice and toasted. Um, the next thing to do, and this is a total secret, take a garlic clove and rub your toasted bread with the raw garlic. It's gonna add a whole nother dimension of flavor. Not to mention that it gets you more garlic in your diet, which is not only good for your immunity, but it tastes the best. So for each slice of sourdough that you're making, put a good amount of your caramelized onions on. Get it on there. This is a fancy toast. You wanna to make it fancy, make it big, make it bold. So a big scoop of those beautiful and well-seasoned caramelized onions. Spread them evenly, coast to coast. We don't serve dry bread in this family. So what you do is you just have to make sure there's no bread showing. So your, your caramelized onions everywhere. Next, you're gonna put your Swiss cheese down. I happen to have Swiss cheese. If you don't have Swiss cheese, whatever you got will work. So just roll with the punches. Whatever you've got in your pantry is perfect. Once the toast are caramelized onions, cheese, throw them in the oven. 350, bake them for about 10 minutes, and at the very last, you're gonna put it on broil and crisp that and brown that cheese up. So our fancy toast is done. It is caramelized, it smells amazing. The next thing to do, once we pull it out of the pan, is we're gonna to top it with even more fresh thyme. Same thyme that we used before, chopped up real nice. I'm just gonna sprinkle it over the top. And actually, there's one less step. You have to let it rest. It's too hot to eat, so walk away, do your best to say no, and come back in about 10 minutes. Ooh, yeah. Ready for me to take a bite? 